Hi everybody, welcome Hebrain folks. This is the lovely Victoria Thurman Hall. Hi everybody. This is the lovely Rachel, who's Hello. my gorgeous model. And um, I'm Stephen and we're here in Calabasas at the amazing Wella studio. And uh, we're so pleased to be sharing with you on um, Facebook Live. So without further ado, I'm gonna get right into my hair because I know you guys like to see what we're doing right out of the gate. So this um, lovely model is a professional hairdresser. So she likes cool, she likes edgy, she likes something that's a little bit different, she likes a cool shape. She does not blow dry her hair straight. Rachel loves to wear her hair in fro. So that's basically what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna be working with this really psychedelic purple pick here that belongs to Rachel actually. And um, I've been very inspired by sort of 70s skinhead haircuts. Um, and obviously those are primarily on straight hair. But uh, what I'm gonna do here, you can see I've got a head start already with her hair. And I've pruned this side down here to really take away the volume, uh, but not really cut the length of her hair. And what I'm gonna do for you guys at home now, if that's okay, I'd like to get started and pretty much do the same thing on the other side. Um, later, I'm gonna jump back in and talk about what I'm gonna do on top. But the main thing for me is cutting her hair into a cool shape, but also working with what Victoria's done with color. So without further ado, no sectioning. Uh, no combing of the hair. I am literally going to cut this hair, Kelly, by simply just cutting right into the hair and cutting freehand. So this is called freehand hair cutting. And the key here, guys, uh, if you've not done this before, if it's new to you, the key is basically to just move your thumb when you're cutting hair. So if you notice when I'm cutting, it's just one blade that's moving, the other blade is incredibly steady. I'm not really kind of moving in and out of the hair that way or jumping up and down. And um, all the time my scissors are moving, but it's really only ever one blade that moves. And my objective here is to keep the length, I don't really want to cut the length of the hair too much, but really snug this down through here, Kelly, so that uh, we get a really nice profile. And obviously from taking that hair away, that's making this hair here look and appear bigger and fuller. And for two reasons. Number one, um, because I'm graduating the hair, it makes the top look bigger and fuller. But the other big reason that I really love is that Victoria has placed the color in such a way where it's kind of a bit of an optical illusion. Um, you know, we all know when we go into art galleries, um, you know, dark tends to run away from our eye, muted tends to run away from our eye, and kind of brighter and, and, and lighter tends to come to our eye. So as you can see me coloring this, I'm actually coloring her hair with my scissors. Um, and in doing that, it's really what I'm doing is I'm cutting off the little bit of color that was in the nape area that um, Victoria placed in there. And what that's doing, it's grading from darker into lighter. So again, you can see this really nice profile that I'm after. I'm looking for a really big, full profile shape through here. All right, welcome everybody. Kelly here from Behind the Camera uh, with our Hairbrain friends. Thanks for tuning in. Deb was wondering, Stephen, uh, which scissors are, are those that you're using? Um, really good scissors. <laughs> really sharp ones. <laughs> really sharp and pointy. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit... Um, tainted when it comes to scissors. These are actually made by a company called Mitsutani. And uh, Mitsutani are a Japanese company. Uh, they make amazing scissors, but I particularly like these ones because I uh, was very honored to be able to design these in unison with something called Cut Craft. So they're designed in such a way here to where the, the thumb hole is, is tilted. It's tilted that way and it's tilted that way and then what I had them do over about 25 prototypes was take metal out of here but add metal into here and what I've noticed over 39 years of teaching people to cut hair is they typically want to put the thumb too far in the hole which kind of leads to cutting hair like that and the scissors jerk around a lot it's neon impossible to do that Kelly with these scissors, you really kind of jam your thumb in there 
and it allows you to do what you really need to do in cutting hair, and that is keep one blade still. Michael says hello. Hey, Michael. Michael who? Give us, this seems like a Greek last name. I am going to butcher it. Ah, Koutsarayaris. That's it. That's a great name. <laughs> hey, Michael. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate everybody being on. If you've just joined us, I'm here with Victoria Thurman Hall. We're at the Weller Studio in Calabasas, California. And um, this is my gorgeous model, Rachel. And I'm doing um, a fro haircut on her, really, that's kind of a little bit sort of a twist on the 70s, so to speak. And um, I'm not sectioning her hair, I'm not combing her hair. I'm using this pick to pull her hair out. And what you can't see off camera is I'm actually working with three mirrors. So I get front view, side view, the other side view. And that way I can really see the, um, the shape. So I'm gonna hand over to Victoria in a moment to talk a little bit about what's her inspiration with color. But before I do that, I just wanna show you how I'm gonna snug this side. And if you look here, can you see it's quite narrow? And then I've kind of left these pieces out through the bottom. And what I did there, Kelly, I kind of, as I cut her hair, my scissors came in real tight through her temples. And I also chased it into her temples that way too. So I'm going to pretty much do the same thing here. As you get going, I'm just going to follow up with Michelle. Um, those scissors are from Mizutani, the Stephen Moody edition. Marina Lantos, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Melissa, thanks for your support. Glad to have you guys all joining us today. Rick Bennett, hello, Stephen Hey, Fight. Rick Bennett, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. So if you look, my scissors are pointing right into her temples as I do this. So I'm kind of graduating her hair off her face that away. And obviously that kind of leaves that um, length around the edges. And then as I come this way, I kind of come round and snug that in through there. A lot of you follow what I do on, um, on Instagram and on Facebook and whatever, and many of you, thank you very much, visit the, the cut craft classes and triple craft classes that we do. And a lot of you know that I'm really in love with that area there. I love to create vacant space. Um, I think it suits most women whether it's long, short, curly, or straight, um, whether you're placing color, you're cutting hair or you're styling hair, if you can alleviate and get weight off of this area, it does suit most people. And, um, and again, as many of you know, well, uh, you know, we're all about not just coloring hair, but um, coloring hair to fit the haircut, coloring hair to fit the face shape, Colouring hair to fit the hair tight. And probably most importantly of all, colouring the hair to fit with, um, with lifestyle. So you've got the right cuts and colours on the right people. Marina was wondering if you ever stretch the curls when cutting? I don't stretch them. What, what I do underneath here, I pick them. On top, I'm going to stretch them. On top, what I'm going to do, Marina, is this. I'm going to really pull it that way. But in here, the stretching's more with my pick. So I'm picking it out. And just, what, again, one other thing right before I hand over to Victoria. Um, I, I do a lot of um, African-American hair or Afro hair, whatever you want to call it, whether it's in South Africa or it's wherever. And a lot of people sort of make a comment to me when I'm doing their hair, and that is that they are very trusting of me doing their hair. And although that sounds like a compliment, it's actually something that they can feel. And what that means is, as I'm working their hair, I'm not being gentle. I'm really picking that hair out. And when you're working on someone with naturally curly hair like this, it makes them feel good. Because it feels like you, you're in control. So my tip, I guess, for doing this hair is don't be sort of timid and gentle. You know, be really quite firm. You won't hurt anybody. Or not intentionally. Hi, Victoria. Hi, and I'm totally over here thinking exactly opposite of what you want to do with this type of texture and the curl to keep the integrity. You want to go gentle. And that was the big thing and the influence for Rachel and I when we had our first conversation is all about the consultation. 
I asked her what her primary concern was, and it's all about maintaining her curl. So my color choices were really around lightening up her hair in a super, super gentle emulsion and making sure that the integrity of her hair stayed there. So it's a little opposite with the firmness of the cutting versus the gentleness of the color. So I use blonde or multi-blonde powder in a one to four ratio and kind of took some gloved hands and went through and lightened it up. But before I did that, I had to confer with Mr. Moody because I have to know where he's cutting in order to place my color on her head. When you say one to four ratio, what exactly do you mean by that? Sure. So I'm using one part of blonde or multi-blonde powder and four parts of my 4% color touch emulsion in order to lighten up her hair. Um, it's a mild lightener, so you're not going to have to worry about the hair jumping high and fast because, believe it or not, her hair texture, although it's curly, is still quite fine in its consistency. And we all know that curly hair is porous hair. Because of the shape of the twisting and the turning of the hair, it's thirsty hair. As soon as I put lightener on, we needed to put more lightener on because her hair sucked it up quickly. So the consistency also helped me with placing it. And all I did was put some gloves on and strategically pulled and put my color into the interior. You'll actually see her before picture a little bit later and you'll see how quite dark she was. Christy Ramos is with us. Hey, Christy. Hey. She's Hi. loving it. The profile is beautiful. And Jinx wants to know, is her hair a 4C curl pattern? I'm going to say yes. Thank you. <laughs> Marina wanted to go... Like, we, we both this went is, blank. This is definitely 4C, I would, I would say. Uh, Marina was wondering, 1 to 4 to dilute it, would that weaken the strength? Yeah, so that's a really great question. When I use a 1 to 4 ratio with blonde or multi-blonde powder... I'm really looking for control as well as lightning power. So when I use a one to four ratio, it's about slowing down the lightning in a controlled, gentle way. So the Pac-Man doesn't come in and eat like rah, 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 rah. Instead, it's coming in slow and steady and I get a more controlled lift. So it's a great question. I bet you wanna know what I did for an overlay too, huh? Absolutely. Yep. So um, the thing about Rachel is she likes change. <laughs> Go figure, us hairdressers. She's a hairdresser, we're a hairdresser. We want some change. So the first thing she said to me in our consultation is, I don't wanna be red. So I thought all reds were off. The next thing out of her mouth is, I love copper. I'm like, I'm in. So she also said, I haven't ever really done it, so I don't wanna do it like all out. And then I decided to use my Color Touch Relights and I used it as a glossing service. And now I'm doing it with 1.9% in a one to three ratio. And I just used our Stroke 3-4. So a orange to put on top of the pre-lightened hair that I'd lifted up to a dark blonde, a medium blonde and a light blonde. If you're just joining us, we are here on Facebook Live with um, Kelly Scapacci. Hey everyone. And Victoria Thurman Hall. Hey everybody. Uh -huh. And the most important person in the room is my gorgeous hairdresser model. This is Rachel, <laughs> who I've cut several times. She's one of my favorite girls. I just love doing hairdressers, by the way. Many of you already know that. Now, Jinx was wondering about the follow-up when she wets her hair, comes out of the shower. Uh, how is it going to be for her to style her hair? Great question. And maybe we should sort of um, ask Rachel that, because number one, it's her hair. And number two, she's a hairdresser. Um, well, 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 you can talk, but you mustn't move your head. You can move your bottom jaw, but not your head. <laughs> yeah, that's hard. That is hard. Like, Asking you... Yeah. Right. You can talk, but not move your head. Um, with my texture of hair, when I wet my hair, I do have a nice little curl to it. Um, whenever I get a cut by Steven, I love it because it falls right into place. So I could literally put some gel or any type of mousse or anything that I like. I usually wear my hair more defined. I don't walk around with an afro all the time. I like it more curly or I'll do a twist out. 
but it definitely is going to fall so much better. It's going to fall into place. Um, the back is going to be super cute and curly. And really, all I'm going to have to do is worry about the top. So I'm really excited. Do you, do you wash and go or do you dry Do you dry your hair after you apply product? Um, I do both. Sometimes I will do a wash and go and I will just apply like a gel and define each section of my hair. Or if I want to do a twist out, I will twist and use product and sit under the dryer and get a more defined twist out look. Awesome. Thank you. And if I can just relate that, um, you know, the color and the cut relate it back to style. I think to answer the question, I think when Rachel does her own hair, it's going to be this shape that's smaller. If she just leaves it be and it just, because basically what this hair does, it coils back on itself to one degree or other. So what you're going to see today over the, sort of the next 30 minutes or so, you're going to see quite a big sort of expanded dramatic shape. But the reality of it is, is when it's not picked and it kind of curls back on itself, you just simply see a smaller version of, um, of what we've got here really. I'm really liking this shape. It's looking really good. Really good. I don't know if you can see on the camera at home, but it's very slightly longer in the middle. I'm kind of coming that way. And again, for you um, hair moody junkies, you know I love this shape. I, I, I love shapes that are kind of longer into the middle, longer into the back, shorter towards the front. Um, and for people that have done um, cut craft with me, you know that shape is um, considered round. So in inches, that hair there is just a whisker longer than that hair there. And again, the telltale is not just the shape. The other telltale is obviously the colour, because we're seeing quite a lot of bright colour through the middle. So again, it, the haircut and the colour and everything is kind of all gelling together, no pun intended. Hello, Stephen Stylin. Welcome. And Marina has another question. If this was a client, do you style before the cut or would you have the client come in with her hair as she wears it? Um, I think probably the best way to answer that question is to describe what did I do with um, Rachel today, really. I mean, Rachel came in today. She had her hair colored last night. We asked her not to shampoo her hair, not to do anything to her hair. So what I did as soon as she came in, I just took her to the back wash. I did not shampoo her hair. I like this hair when it's a two, three days old. And um, what I did, I wet her hair down at the shampoo basin and um, really applied vigorous amounts of um, conditioning treatment to her hair. Not because it needs the condition. I just think it's nicer when it lays down a little bit more. The other thing I did right from the shampoo bowl too, I worked this hair here down. So I pulled all this down and onto her neck, knowing that that's going to be my finished look. So I was really conscious of not putting her in a turban. I was conscious of not pricking this hairline hair up and out. And uh, then I applied my product, and I used a cocktail of product uh, that basically started with Perfect Me. And then I love this. The only reason that I really like this one is it's got this little nozzle here. And what I did, I kind of parted her hair all the way through the interior and I squirted that on right at the root. And obviously it's called root shoot. But it, it's really neat how it comes. It's almost like a scalp treatment, but it's mousse in a nutshell. I then use this um, extra volume root mousse from mid lengths through to about the ends. Um, and then the last thing I used to cocktail her hair was... Um, a little bit of this new product that we're very proud of from Imi called Cocktail Me. And that went kind of mid-lengths and ends. Um, it's an oil-based product, super shiny. And at the end, when I'm done, this is a kind of a spray-on one that I'm going to use. And that's just really for the silhouette. It's for the edges. So that, that's called Film Image. So different products for different parts of the head to do different things. Kelsey Higginbotham says hello. She's joining us and giving out helpful tints in the audience. Hey, Kelsey. Hey. I just work with Kelsey. Oh. She's in, uh, just tuning in. Cleveland. Yeah. Hi, Kelsey. Thank you very much for your help at Triple Craft in Cleveland this last weekend. You were amazing, girl. Absolutely amazing. 
So one other little tip too when you're doing this kind of hair is you cannot look in the mirror enough. Uh, without doubt, your best friend here really is um, your mirror. Because Actually, Stephen, that's the beautiful thing about the hair color, too, is when you're working with this kind of texture, you absolutely have to step out and take a look at it as well. How am I placing it on the hair is really about stepping back. We hairdressers get really tight into hair and don't look out ever. And again, I know you can't do this in a salon, but to follow up on, on Victoria's point now, I'm actually using with using three mirrors. So I've got one here and I can see in profile that way, I can see in profile that way, I can see that way. And I've strategically placed those mirrors for tonight just quite simply because it's easier for me to do the hair and keep looking. So Stephen, when you're doing a freehand haircut start to finish, what are some key points? How do you not get lost? Do you, are there end goals or how, what is your roadmap when freehanding? Well, I think to begin with, what you've got to have is a picture in your mind of where you're going. And my picture at the very beginning that I discussed with Rachel and Victoria at the very, very outset was I really didn't want to cut a massive amount of hair from here. I wanted to build this bigger and fuller into the crown. Um, to make the crown fuller and bigger, if you take that underneath away, that makes that bigger and fuller there. And a general rule of thumb that I use when I'm cutting hair, period, is I cut off the most amount of hair first. I cut off the least amount of hair last. And for that roadmap that you're referring to, that helps me with that. Basically what I'm doing now is cutting off the least amount of hair. So I'm rounding this over so that this corner here is a bit softer. And I'm going into a little bit of length on top. So in this instance, I've cut the most amount of hair off in the nape and the sides. And I get those shapes in, I get the balance in, and um, I don't move away from the sides and the back until I've got that. And now what I'm really doing is kind of pruning down this top and um, cutting off less hair, for want of a better phrase. And again, I just keep pulling that hair. Just pull that hair out away from the head. I'm not being gentle. I do that. And Donna Glasgow is saying hello to you too. She's loving the cut and color. Hi, Thanks, Donna. Donna. Thanks for Master tuning in. Color expert. Who was just in New York, I think. Yeah. I think Donna was just in a class in the Weller studio um, in Soho, in New York City. And a shameless plug here for that studio. If you've not, if you've not visited that studio, that is gorgeous. The one and only downside with the um, studio in New York City is literally you walk out of that studio and your credit card just leaps out of your wallet. You're right in Soho. You're <laughs> right in Soho. And you just spend money like there's no tomorrow, which is fantastic. Raymond Okasaka says hello. Hello to everybody. And, hey, Ray. And Chandra is uh, thinking of it like a sculpture. It is. Raymond from Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah. yeah. How are you doing, Raymond? Thanks for tuning in, my friend. But yeah, it is like a sculpture. I think one of the, th the reasons why I love working with Steven as a cutter, um, like I cut, I color, I style. I work here at the studio and I teach the Master Color Expert program, which is people that want to push themselves to a higher level. And we constantly are talking about, you have to color the cut. So when I work with Steven, I get to kind of reverse engineer and get my brain working a little bit harder because I've got to imagine what's in his head, just like a consultation when we do hair color at home, and then be able to translate that into the color so that he can cut off all my hard work. Or not. Or not. <laughs> in this case. Not, not in this case. We've worked together before where it's all on the floor. <laughs> We learn from these things, yes, we maybe. <laughs> Deanne was wondering, um, are you done with the sides? Which brings me to further question. How do you incorporate um, you know, your side or where you took off the most amount of weight to the top where you're taking out the least? How do we incorporate? Uh -huh. I think the, 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 how do we incorporate the different lengths is, in this instance, I really want to kind of um, meld the different lengths together. So here, look, as I'm cutting this, Kelly, I know you're catching that on film. 
it's just like a flowing movement that I'm making through the air. Because there is no quote-unquote guideline, um, what I've got to do is cut a little bit of hair, pick it, and then use my best friend. Which is the mirror. Which is the mirror. Which is the mirror. Yeah, and with the mirror, obviously I'm looking at the shape, I'm looking at her face shape, and um, I'm really liking what we're seeing here, both cut-wise, texture-wise, and most importantly of all, I really like where the colour is falling. I think what's important for me for colour is colour choosing the right colour is one thing. You know, a lot of people can choose the right colour. But one of the things that I really enjoy about working with Victoria is she can really kind of hit a golf ball. Um, and that golf ball not only lands in the green, um, it goes in the hole. And um, that's kind of placing colour. I'm over here with a tear in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. You're welcome. And I really mean that. And I think the other thing too, again, just about anybody can colour hair, but is it still hair when you're done? You know, and I think the best people who work with colour are people that can get their, their goals with what colour they want to end up with, but still have it be hair, touchable, movable. Great shape. Stephen, when you're cutting your Afro textured hair, have you been approaching cutting it the same way as you have for years, even your previous previous uh, Sassoon years and things like this? Jose was wondering. Um, well, it's, it's changed in a sense that styles have changed, lengths have changed, balances have changed. But um, I personally like to cut this hair tight and I like to sort of respect what's underneath. And that, I think, is the bit that hasn't changed. I never want to sort of cane the hair and make it submit to my wishes, if that makes sense. Um, and that, that applies to thin hair, curly hair, fine hair, straight hair. I think every hair type, and I, I think Victoria might be able to touch mm -hmm. on this a little bit with colour too. I think every hair type has a window that it can live in. And I think when we beat the living daylights out of the hair, um, I don't like that hair. I, I like to keep it within its, its parameters, its window. And obviously that window is relative to, can she do that at home right. without spending four hours with, um, with cement? Yeah. All kinds of support from the audience. Kelsey's loving it. Natalie, Riley, Ben, everyone's having a great time. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Yay. And I think what I've said right there, Victoria, I think it hey, perhaps applies to, um, to colour, doesn't it? It's, it's probably one of the things that is my favourite when working on any texture is everyone can get a dark to a light, but am I really considering, is the hair fine? Um, what's the length? All of those considerations, we can all get there. My thing is all about integrity. I've been teaching the Master Color Expert class this morning. They're on day two of their first leg of the Master Color Expert program. And what do we stand for as masters? What do we stand for as professionals, as colorists, as cutters, as people who style hair and educate our clients? And it's integrity. We want to be in, as integral to our clients as possible. And without having integrity, for what we do, the professionalism that we do, and integrity of hair, what are we doing? We're just making it long. Yep. Yeah. I'm super excited about Rachel being a hairdresser because last night I was educating her on the process while we were doing it. And I totally like wanting to mentor her and like have her come back and <laughs> start doing some classes because we kind of bonded a little bit late last night over a bag of pretzels and another bag of chips and another rice, rice krispies. krispies. It sounds yeah. like a model diet yeah, when you're getting their hair dyed. Yeah, a model diet for sure. <laughs> all, all the snacks are, are rated. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel, shall we just share with everybody, Victoria included, what happened um, about half an hour ago? Yeah. This is the girl that goes... I want to be natural. Victoria, I don't want, I want to try out this color. Oh, I want to be natural. And then today she goes, I wish we would have gone green like you wanted to. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you 
could have said that just 12 hours earlier. But it's all good. We'll do it later. That's why I did choose it because she was pretty like, okay, you can do this. But I wanted to respect her wishes. Now she knows Don't what I can do. She trusts me. And we can do more at a later date. So um, I'm, I'm seeing color fresh create never seen green in this girl's future. Yay! Yay! And just so you guys know, those that have that are tuned in that are master color experts, um, we have a room full of nine people right now that um, decided to stick around. Yeah. And honored that they're watching. So they're around the room kind of watching in on what we're doing. And they, so not only did they go from nine to five today, but they're sticking around um, an hour and a half later just to kind of watch us and have some fun. So Getting uh, some extra curricula. Maybe we could turn around and give everybody a wave, Kelly, yeah. at the back of the room. <laughs> yep. When we're getting ready to click off, definitely will. So I'm almost there with this shape. I think I'm at the point now where I don't really need to change the shape. I think what I need to do now is kind of refine it yeah. a little bit. Yep, that was Brad. That's what uh, Bradley was wondering. How do you, how, when you're freehanding, how do you know when you're finished? You feel like you're, you've reached the goal in your mind for the shape. I think Bradley's question is probably the best question that's been asked <laughs> so far. It's like painting, isn't it? I mean, when do you know you're done? Um, you don't really. And I could sit here till midnight doing this. I'd still find something to do. You know, it's like cutting that, that bob, that line. You know, if you curve it this way or that way, you're always gonna find something. So I think at some point you just have to stop. And it's different for it's different for everybody, but this is the hair texture as you all know watching at home, it moves. This hair doesn't stay in one spot. So as you pick it this way and that way, there's always something that you see. So I think the answer to Bradley's question is, I don't know. <laughs> I think you're done when you're done, really. That's like every hairdresser, like as they are leaving the salon, your client's leaving the salon, you're like, wait, wait, just one more little, oh, little yeah, bit. little more twist. That's all, everybody, that's the artist in us, and that's why we came into this industry. Exactly, yeah. And the really great thing is you're taking the time to do education and watch Hairbrain and be able to watch color cut and style combination um, so that you're inspired. Yeah, yeah. And I think to Victoria's point there, you know, this shape is quite loud. And when, when um, Rachel stands up, you're going to see her clothes, you're going to see her makeup, you're going to see the big picture. And you'll realize why the color's loud, why the shape is loud. Um, but, you know, you could cut this with more muted colors. You could cut this and cut it a little bit longer or shorter or whatever. You could cut this and do a little wand curl, you know, to make it a bit more commercial. So please don't look at this and think this is it. It doesn't have to be this way. It can be finished in a different way. We can have, you know, different color palette. And I mean, I do particularly like the placement of the color that um, that Victoria's done. So, but yeah. Well, that color couldn't have happened without talking to you prior, because what you want is a harmony between it. And so I knew he was going to do a quite structured color. And we talked, we both wanted to have something super fun color-wise. And I did want to do something green, but um, somebody was scared. And that's okay. That's okay. They have the right to say no. But I love that she trusts me now and says, in the future, I want to do it. So a little story about... Um about Rachel, um, and again, this is some of you will probably relate to this. Um, I was in um, Santa Monica, and I was doing a, a pay-per-view video the week after. And I was in um, walking the streets of Santa Monica, and I was looking for some really cool girls to um, to work on this program with. And um, Rachel was sat having a lunch outside of. Um, What's the name of the restaurant? I don't know. Le Pen, oh. the French restaurant, Le Pen. And um, I just looked at her and thought, wow, this girl is so gorgeous. She's got such great features, great bones, a lovely mouth. And um, I went over to her and I said, I really want to cut your hair. 
and she's halfway through a soup. And um, I think she thought I was some kind of fruitcake, some nutter. And um, that's how our relationship started. And I've been doing her hair ever since. Yeah. And uh, I think it's really good for us as hairdressers. If we see someone in an airport, or we see someone in a restaurant or whatever, and we might not have done their hair or whatever, but you like the colour, or you like the hair, tell them. Because I think people need to hear that. Um, you know, I think it's really cool when we, we kind of approach people. And... Um, you know, compliment, great colour. So just carving a little bit of a line through here, if you could carve a line on curly hair. So this is just snugging this down. And again, for people that follow me on um, follow me on Instagram, you know I like neck stretches. We were talking about this last week in Cleveland um, at Triple Craft. And I know there's a lot of people watching that were at the event in Cleveland. I do like to cut shapes that kind of curve through here. And even though this is really curly hair, I still want to be able to get this to sort of sit longer here, longer in the middle, and just snug in a little bit on the neck through there. So we've cut a little bit of a curved shape there. So I'm not cutting a lot of that length through there. Okay. So again, this is all kind of the refining. It's the last sort of 10 or 15 minutes of the haircut. I'm not really changing the shape or the length. It's just refinement. And again, it's all here, look. So my thumb is just barely inside that hole, Kelly. I don't know if you can get that against. If you look at my thumb, it's just barely inside there. And it just helps me to get into some really acute angles through there. It'd be very difficult to do this haircut and put your thumb all the way inside the hole. It allows for more dexterity. Yes, that's the word I was looking for. Better movement with the thumb just resting on the outside. Yeah. Versus buried in. Versus buried inside, yeah. And uh, for people that are kind of new to cutting, I know a lot of you out there are sort of newish to cutting hair. A great exercise to do is to just sit and watch TV and just nurse your scissors. You know, really hold your scissors. And um, I was talking to someone just recently by the name of Josh DeMarco, who's a really... I'm a big fan of John, Josh. Who's, if you don't follow him, check him out on Instagram. And, um, you know, we were talking about chopsticks and how the first time that I went to a Japanese restaurant and I used chopsticks... I couldn't taste the sushi. One more time. The first time I went to eat sushi at a Japanese restaurant, I couldn't taste the sushi. And the reason was my one and only thought process was don't drop this sushi. All I could think about was using my chopsticks. You know, so 30 years later, I taste sushi. It tastes really good. And the reason it tastes really good is I'm not thinking at all not in the slightest, about holding my chopsticks. And cutting Rachel's hair now, I am not thinking about my right hand. It's really all about the silhouette, it's about picking. And my scissors are really like chopsticks. They're doing exactly what I'm asking them to do. And it's just practice. There really isn't any kind of magical formula. And again, if you're new to cutting hair... Um, great thing to do is to sit and watch TV, talk on the phone, make a sandwich, and not put your scissors down. Thank you everybody for joining us. If you're just joining us, my name is Stephen. I'm with Victoria Thurman Hall. Um, Victoria heads the Weller Colour Master Expert here in Calabasas. She is an amazing colorist, but also, probably more importantly, she's an amazing communicator and educator and really sees color and I'm really proud to work with her and collaborate with her in cut and color. And behind the camera is the one and only Kelly Scapacci. Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today. Appreciate your support. Rachel, they're loving your shape, they're loving your color. Beautiful. 
Almost there, guys. And I think what we've managed to do, Rachel, is also marry together. She had some, she had some shorter pieces in the middle, right through here. And I think with this haircut, what we've managed to do is marry them together. So, Victoria, how about if we jump over to the screen now? Yeah. And um, we look at a before of sure. Rachel. And uh, more importantly, probably some formulations of how did you do this amazing cut? Yeah. So um, when we look at Rachel, she is a um, somebody that that is not going to have that curl pattern with her fine texture if we over lighten quickly. So her natural base is a level three. She's a dark brown. And she had some sevens, medium blondes, into a few light pieces. But if you look at the, the before picture, you see that she had a lot of dark and not a lot of light. And we needed light to make the top pop. I'm going to put the formula up so that um, afterwards Kelly can take a picture and put it up into the feed so you guys can see it as well. Did we do the video of... Um... No, we didn't. I won't play. Huh. Let me try again. There. Oh, there it is. Can you I'll see that? Again. I can. So you can see her crown is quite short and the length is quite long in the nape. And I'm kind of going the opposite way with this haircut. I'm kind of pulling the crown out and making the... Making the nape sit down. So do you want to talk formulations? Yeah, um, again, like the formula is a, the overlay is very temporary over pre-lightened hair. So we decided to use Relights, a stroke 3-4, which is going to be a copper color, an orange color, and we did a one to three ratio, one part of color to three parts of my 1.9% six volume emulsion. And that was only on for five minutes. You've got this beautiful crisp color. And now, <laughs> and, and now we can make sure that we have this beautiful rust. And then at a later date, we can change it out for it. That's the important part. So, so keeping this formula um, changeable, how long will Rachel's color last before you feel like she can come in for her green? Yeah, so the, when it comes to hair color, the hotter the water, the quicker it's going to come out. So that's a fantastic question because the formula that I used is designed not to stick around. It's two, six washes total. And then so the hotter her water, maybe we can push that closer and tighter. Um, I know I don't have availability like right away, but we can make it happen pretty quick within a couple few weeks so that we make sure that she's got that green. But... I want to make sure she's firm on it. So I walked in and she's like, oh, I wish I'd done green. So I need to make sure I do a better consultation. <laughs> it was late last time. Yeah. And you'd already worked 12 hours. Mm -hmm. Both of you. We had a blast, though. Yeah. Don't you love those clients that come and sit in your chair and you just, it's, it's like a little bit of a party? <laughs> So, it, it, so it's just like a little bit of a party, you guys having some fun together. And um, that's what it was like last night. It was like um, really good conversation. And sometimes that's what a consultation needs to be. It's just more of a conversation. Sitting eye to eye, talking what's important, what's not important. How do you treat your hair? What do you want me to do in treating your hair? And we forget that. And I don't have the right to touch her hair until... I've got to know her a little bit. So even though I'd worked all day and she'd worked all day, it was important that we had that conversation before I touched her head. Still coming for the outline, Stephen? Oh yeah, the outline's everything for me. Just snugging that down. I think you could probably see, if you've watched this haircut from the beginning, 
basically what I started with was a very loud shape. In other words, the edges were very long and very um, sort of heavy. And bit by bit by bit, I've kind of pared it down to where it's not quite as loud. And uh, I kind of like this now. And that's what you do with this hair type. You don't cut it to the length that you want and you're done. You'd kind of have to work it down. And uh, it's really fun. It's a really fun thing to do. But um, you have to have patience. You really have to have patience. There's no, I don't think there's any quick ways to do this that I've found. That's the way I like to approach color. Keep the hair on the head, kind of slow, low, and integrity based. You look beautiful, girl. Beautiful. Almost done here, Kelly. Uh, maybe if anybody's uh, just joining us, we're here at the Weller Studio in uh, Calabasas. This is my gorgeous model who is a, um, she's a hairdresser, so she's not a civilian. She's part of our team. And um, she likes things that are cool and different. And we're kind of headed towards a little bit of a 70s sort of um, skinhead sort of look to these longer sort of ed edges through here and um, really gone for a bigger sort of more expanded crown which um, my scissors have done that but also um, Victoria's colours done that as well just to really kind of bring this out through there I love how it kind of works a little bit away from a face a little bit across a face um, if you weren't with us earlier, I was saying, for me, a really super important part of any haircut is right in here, look. Whether you're cutting long hair or short hair, I love to get these areas in snug. Either snug with the haircut or snug with the style or snug with the colour or all of the above. I think it's quite complimentary when there's that kind of vacant space. Through, you know, I love the the sort of short in here and the gap between the corner of her eye and a haircut and then suddenly we've got these long pieces here look, which are quite a little bit unexpected really it's really been fun doing this for you guys this is I think the fourth or fifth one that we've done for, um, for Hairbrain and I'm either in the well, a studio in New York or here in um, in Calabasas, and then and um, soon just, again in Boston. I uh, just about to say, yeah, we're we're doing the last one of the season. Our season kind of ends July first. We're doing another one in Boston, which is going to be really cool because we're actually on set in Boston. We're doing a a triple craft event for about 150 hairdressers in Massachusetts. And uh, we're taking you with us. So if you tune in next Sunday night, it's not Monday, um, it's Tuesday night. And I want to say it's 6.30 um, East Coast time. So what would that be? 3.30. 3.30 here on the, um, on the West. Yeah. So that's going to be really fun. I'm, I'm working with an amazing colorist by the name of Christopher Citron mm -hmm. and a great stylist, a really cute girl who's super talented, who's based in Boston and her name is Jen Eng. I'm working with her as well so yeah, it's going to be really cool. So, a little clean up. I just want to pipe in real quick and answer Heather's question. Yes, you can watch this later. Uh, just head to the Hairbrain Facebook page under the video tab, all of our Facebook Lives live there. You can search Stephen Moody. His Facebook Lives will all pop up. Yeah, and it's still right there for me to read that. Thanks, Rebecca. So Thanks, David, Thanks, Shanice, Shanice, everyone. Thank you for your time but they and attention. Go because we need to see the total look. I want everybody to see um, Rachel and see the big picture here, which is really her image. 
It's obviously, what you're looking at here is a cut and a colour. So I want you to really see Rachel. And Kathy, yeah. Ashley, Raymond, thank you guys all for tuning in. Yeah. Just bear with us one second. Just want to put a little bit of gloss into this. This is an Amy product here by the name of Thermal Image. It's good to give it a little shake to begin with. And this is really a surface product. I'm not really putting this down at the roots. And this just gives the hair a little bit more of a sheen. A bit more curl. And we mentioned earlier that when Rachel does her own hair, she's probably more than likely to have this curl a little bit more defined. She will throw it every once in a while. But uh, this shape's not really going to change when she does it herself. So, shall we stand Rachel up and see the big picture here? Because this is not about a haircut. This is not about a colour. This is about a person wearing all this. So let's... Uh, you ready, Kelly? I'm so ready. So, here she goes. Yay! So there's the big picture. Cool. Beautiful, Rachel. We're loving it. Thank you everyone for tuning in for another edition of Facebook Live with Stephen Moody and Victoria Hall. Bye guys. We'll catch Bye. you next time. Bye from Weller Studio. Bye, Bye. everybody. Thanks for tuning in.